lot of our day-to-day -day functions like running, walking, even chewing and blinking and talking, all of them involve muscle contraction. And this muscle contraction is something that's quite fascinating because it's a live example of how chemical energy in our body in the form of ATP is converted to mechanical energy. This mechanical energy can be seen or you know perceived in the form of movement. Muscle contraction happens because of these two proteins in our muscle cells, which is actin and myosin. You must be quite familiar with this diagram of a sarcomere. If you're not, I would suggest checking out our video on muscle fibers. So the actin and myosin filaments that make up the sarcomere, they are what are involved in muscle contraction. Basically, when they bind to each other, that is when the muscle contracts. So in this video, we're going to zoom in on one such location inside a sarcomere here and try to understand how chemical energy is converted to mechanical energy, which leads to the muscle contraction. So let's take a closer look at this sarcomere. So here we have the two proteins, actin and myosin. Let's take a closer look at how they look like. Actin is a polymeric protein. Each of these individual circles that you see, that is one actin protein. It is linked to one another to form a polymeric protein. An actin, much like DNA, is a helical protein. Although DNA is not a protein, I'm just using it as a comparison to show that actin is a polymeric helical protein. In contrast, myosin is not polymeric, it is quite straight and the myosin has two heads that sort of project from the myosin protein like this. Although I've shown only one head here, you can assume that there is another head right here. And the myosin head is quite unique because it has different binding sites. One of the binding sites is for actin and the other is for ATP. Like how myosin has an actin binding site, Actin has a myosin binding site. It makes sense, right? Because if actin and myosin need to bind to each other, they must have each other's binding sites. But when the muscle is relaxed, when it is not contracting, the myosin binding sites on actin are not visible, are not exposed to myosin. That is because of this protein known as tropomyosin. Tropomyosin is sort of like a regulatory protein. It allows the myosin binding sites to be exposed only when the muscle needs to contract. So how does a muscle know when to contract? The signal for muscle contraction is sent by nerves. So if you know about the neuron structure, there is something known as the neuromuscular junction. So this is a nerve cell, a neuron. This is the axon terminal basically and this is the muscle cell. So when the action potential travels down to the axon terminal, neurotransmitters from the axon terminal are released out. These neurotransmitters, which is usually for skeletal muscles acetylcholine, it comes and binds to these receptors on the muscle cells. When this happens, there is an influx of calcium ions from the sarcoplasmic reticulum inside the sarcomere. So the calcium ions flood inside this muscle cell and reach this sarcomere, each the individual unit, functioning unit of the muscle cells. So the calcium ions bind to this protein known as troponin. Now this troponin is like best friends with calcium and tropomyosin. When it meets calcium, calcium says, hey, let's move together. When troponin is moving away, it takes tropomyosin along with it. The binding of calcium ions to troponin causes a conformational change in tropomyosin, exposing the myosin binding sites. And now the myosin head can bind to this actin filament. So here in the myosin head, you can see that it is attached to ADP and PI. ADP is nothing but adenosine diphosphate. We get this by the hydrolysis of ATP. So ADP and PI and energy is also released when ATP undergoes hydrolysis. So this position of the myosin head that is now ready to bind with actin is known as the cocked position. How it gets to this cocked position, we'll see in just a while.
So now with the myosin binding sites exposed on actin, myosin head can bind to the actin protein, actin monomer basically. This linking of the myosin head to actin is known as the cross bridge. And this entire process where the cross bridge forms and detaches and forms and detaches is known as the cross bridge cycle. So now with the myosin head attached to actin, this myosin moves this way. Basically, it moves to the left or to the right, wherever it is oriented. And when it does that, it pulls the actin closer to the end line. So the myosin head was originally attached here somewhere, right? And it has moved this way and it has pulled the actin filaments. So the bending of the myosin head when it is attached to this actin is known as the power stroke. And this power stroke is exactly where the chemical energy is converted to mechanical energy. So this is where the muscle actually contracts. By contract, I mean move close together, right? So that's when the actin filaments move closer to the end line and this is where the muscle is fully contracted. Once the power stroke has been executed, what happens is the ADP and the inorganic phosphate detach from the myosin head. So at the end of the power stroke, the myosin is still attached to actin, the head is still attached to actin, but ADP and the inorganic phosphate, they detach from myosin. For myosin to completely detach from actin, it needs the input of energy. So for the cross bridge to break off, ATP needs to bind to myosin head and when it does, the myosin detaches completely from actin. This is why when a person dies, their muscles become stiff in a condition known as rigor mortis. So when a person dies and when their muscle is already contracted, the myosin head with ADP and PI is attached to the actin. For it to detach from actin, it needs ATP. But when a person has died, ATP production in the mitochondria stops. So the body for some time, close to 4 to 5 hours, uses anaerobic respiration to produce ATP and then also uses glycogen reserves again by anaerobic respiration to produce ATP. When all these reserves have been completely used up, there is no more ATP that is being produced. So that is why the myosin cannot detach from the actin. It is still in its attached cross bridge position with the actin. That's why the uh, dead person's body becomes very stiff and hard after the death and after a couple of hours because there is no energy, there is no ATP for the cross bridge to detach or to break off. And forensic pathologists use this rigor mortis to estimate the time of death when performing autopsies of dead people. And as ATP binds to myosin head and myosin detaches from actin, ATP is hydrolyzed to give ADP and inorganic phosphate. One more thing that is released during this process very importantly is energy. This energy that is released is what brings this myosin head to its cocked position. So if this is its relaxed position with ATP and when ATP is hydrolyzed to ADP and inorganic phosphate and energy, it brings the myosin to its cocked position. It's it's like when if you've ever played with a toy gun during Diwali, you would have pulled the gun backwards so that it would fire the next time. That is basically what cocked means and that is what is happening to the myosin head. It is springing up in this upward position ready to bind with actin. So for the myosin head to come to its cocked position, energy is needed. This is for the next cross bridge to form. We can visualize this in a cyclical manner. So here we'll start with the myosin heads being exposed on actin and now it is in the cocked position. The myosin head is in the cocked position. It binds to the actin forming the cross bridge and then it executes the power stroke, the myosin head bends and pulls the actin filaments closer and once this power stroke is executed, the ADP and inorganic phosphate detach from the myosin head but myosin is still attached to actin but at the end of the power stroke, ATP binds to the myosin head and the cross bridge breaks off, myosin detaches from actin.
but for the next cross bridge to form atp is hydrolyzed to adp and inorganic phosphate and the energy that is released is used to pull the myosin head to the cocked position this gif here explains in a better way how this cross bridge cycle works but basically this cycle is what leads to the muscle contraction and relaxation in our body